take a look here. I'm glad you just recorded. Right? How could you not be? Oh, like, you changed the cow. I changed the cow because Emma couldn't be there, and it's her picture. So. Oh, okay. And I did see you liked this one on photo references. Did I? <laughs> oh, because uh, I just like when they put animals. Up. She's such a cute. That was such a cute set. So this is from a. I don't know where this farm is. Uh, a lady named Katie Prophet took the pictures. There were so many great pictures. She put like a hundred pictures in the set. And um, I thought maybe we try two animals and this is nice because it's black and white. This is a baby and the mama. <laughs> it's just like really cute. Uh, so of course, I was going to proceed with my elephant. Is that okay? Go ahead. Yes, of course. Okay. I mean, if you feel like you want to jump over to cutie, cutie goaties, you can. That's a cow. This it's is a cow, goat. right? No, these are goats. Oh. Yes. Okay. These are goats. I um, like the little one. It's so cute. He's so cute, right? And of course, what you're okay, seeing, just what are you doing one. here? What am I doing here? What's this shape I'm creating? Anybody know? What's the technical term? Envelope. An hexagon. Yeah. The envelope, right? <laughs> so when I start thinking about a painting with more than one subject, I don't think about this subject and then this subject. I think about the space this subject takes uh, up together, right? So that's the very first thing I'm going to define. And not only that, I'm also thinking about the space between the subjects. Right? <gasps> oh, I like that rabbit, Leah. Isn't he a cutie? I thought we can do him next. Isn't he cutie? That's from that same series. Wow. Um, so feel free to grab any of those. They're totally free. So does, so this is what we would call the negative space, right? So when we're defining our creatures, we start by creating this little kind of um, envelope shape. And let's see, in terms of figuring its width versus its height, I can do... You'll see here, I'm sketching a kind of a box in the dotted line. So if we really want to get super fancy here, we will carve this first shape out of this box that we draw. Hold on. And I'm just debating whether there's anything else. And the box, let's see. Is mm, it's rectangular, so it's wider. Here. Um, yeah, about here. I'm checking to see how wide it is versus how tall it is. Yes, so when you start with your box, and I know you're watching me do a lot of things and wondering what the heck I'm doing, but here's what I'm doing. I'm kind of sketching out a box, which is slightly taller. I'm gonna go out a little further here. It's slightly taller than it is wide. So I'm measuring. I'm not, no, I, you can't actually read any numbers on this. <laughs> That's completely unreadable. The numbers have been so covered up by paint, I can't even see them. But I can see that if I go up and then go a little bit higher than my width, because you can see here, right? Here is my width where my thumb is. And then here is my height. 
So if I come over here and I go just a little bit higher, maybe even a touch higher, then my height then I can get the outside dimensions of the box. So all of this is about relation building. This is not the same size, you'll see. It's not, it's bigger, but the proportions are the same, which is really the key. Boy, it's hard to, it's hard to see. Yeah. So although this is really annoying, let me just double check and make sure these are the same width. Yep. Although this is really annoying and seems kind of tedious, I'd like to see your little box that you're building in first, just to make sure proportions are correct and that we understand how I got to this. level. So go ahead and start there and then I'm going to mark out, let's see, I'm going to mark out the halfway points. And I totally drew on the wrong one. It's like you're on the color copy. <laughs> well, actually, that might serve us okay. I'm also finding. Whoops, sorry guys. I'm also finding the halfway point. That's pretty good. Here. If I can kind of see. Probably. I don't like my marks really strong. You can't really see them. Okay. I think this may be enough to help us figure out what we need. We might need to find that halfway point again. But yeah, go ahead and find, this is what I want you to start with. I'm gonna stop this for a moment and send a picture over to you. Sorry. So, I know this makes people dizzy. So here, I'm gonna take a picture of this guy. Oh, I love the rabbit. Cute, yeah, we'll do him next. I thought that was a good shot of a rabbit. We just did one, so I was like wanting to do something a little different, but. And this one is good because these goats. Are um, black and white. Oh, I'm shouting again. Sorry, you guys, I shout so much. Why not to show it? There you go. Oh, sorry. <laughs> ah. Actually, give me one more second. By the way, Leah. What's that? There's something I bought ages ago, which I've been wanting to use and I haven't tried yet. It's called, 
it's it's made by well this one is made by Schminke. It's called liquid charcoal. Ooh. I'll send you a photo. Ew. That sounds that sounds interesting. I'm intrigued. I'll send you a photo with a box and the, so I think there were two tints. I think I bought the one of the two. I'll send you but this one. Yeah. Oh. So today is Thursday. So it's not acrylic. Huh? I mean, well, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm expecting it to behave like watercolor, but I don't know. I'm sending me, sending you the one I finished Tuesday. All right, let's see. And sorry, here, I'm going to come up here and get this back on. Here, hold on. Here you are. Here's the button. I'll bring this down a bit. Yes, I'm going to take a look at this. Where is this? Charcoal. I like that. Liquid charcoal. So it's got three different tints, right? Uh huh. This is a grapeseed cherry pit and peach stone black. So, do you use it like? How do you, you how do well, you? Well, I'm just about to look it up. I, I, I'm not sure actually. I'm just trying to look it up now. I was going to use it like watercolor, but maybe it isn't. Um, I don't know anything about it. Look it up. I'll, I mean, I'm I'll looking it up now after class or maybe during class. Diana, that's like super. You're done. Good job. What a challenging composition and what a successful result. Well, thank you. Don't it, you think? I think yeah, I, I, it was a it was a challenging composition. But you got it. You got there. And I'm glad you didn't mess too much with the bottom pieces. It's really, it's got movement. I love it. Thank I love it. I think that's fantastic. Um, yeah, and Sandra, I'll do a little research too and ask my writer friends. I've yeah. just talked to another artist who I hope to bring on maybe in the summer or the fall. Um, who is one of my favorite artists and teachers here in Portland. If we get her, we'll be really lucky. And I was like, she teaches drawing. She teaches all the things I, I teach, basically. So why do you want to bring her in then? Um, maybe she can like offer some substitute classes. Uh, hold on just a second. Mm -hmm. uh, look, uh, Leah, it says it's a dust-free way to create charcoal paintings or underpaintings. You can also dilute it with water to create different shades. And... I think she knows so a... really, I, I'm just, I think she might have a different perspective. I mean, I think at some point you guys need somebody besides me uh, to teach. So she might pick up a class. We might design a new class for her, you know, like we did for Lado. Um, I just think You're it's not getting rid of Lado, right? No, 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 of course not. This is all expansion we're talking about. If things continue on as they are, I think we're in pretty good shape. Oh, good. I mean, I won't say brilliant, as long as Reuters will need it. The key is Reuters will need to keep paying what they pay. But like, as long as they do that, I think we're, we're, in, we're, we're in good, uh, we're in good shape. How is Gina doing? She's, you know, I get notes from her every once in a while. She's still drawing. Um, she keeps saying she wants to jump into class, but we haven't seen her yet, you know, for a while. I think she's doing. She's definitely keeping her skills up. Yes. So, uh, ladies, are you sending this over to me yet? Or are you, um, are you sending this over or are you trying to jump ahead? Um, I already sent mine up and I think Anna also. Send it over. Let me take a look. Not that I don't want you to, not that I don't trust you to go forward, but I want to make sure we've got our proportions on this grid, this little box we've created for ourselves correctly. Uh, we did send it over. You did? Why am I not saying? Okay, I'm sorry. I'm an idiot. No, 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 no. No, just like, uh, 
distracted here. Hold on. Oh, I see it. There it is. Perfect. It's oh, just perfect. technology and technology fails sometimes to notify us. So good, don't worry. Me, Ani and Anna. One. Yeah, that looks. Um, Anna, make sure that your bottom and your top are the same height or the same width. Okay. Right? Um, I can't really tell because your your paint is quite so what you can do is measure is uh you can either measure this right and compare it to this, make sure they're the same width, or even better, I like to check from this side. Is mm. the distance from here to here the same as the distance from here to here? Got yeah. that? It is the same. I think my page is a bit. It must be the page. Okay. Off. All right. So really good, ladies. All right. So let's let's move on. This is the. So as we're starting to sketch, right? This is what we're. This is what I'm thinking about. I'm thinking about these negative uh, shapes, right? And this one, and notice the neat thing about these is they're kind of like triangles right all of them like and a lot of them start at the halfway point now this definitely the big question will be how far in does this go i'm going to say it's about a little bit let uh, a little bit more than one third but not too much more across the top this one here goes down to about here. No, you'll see, yep, I did that wrong. You'll see and notice that I never practice these because I want you all to see that in the demos, mistakes are really, as you judge, you think you know where something is, it's easy to misjudge it. I mean, these ones I think are pretty easy because they're, they line up with the halfway point. I think that's too far in, but look at how my, my um, pencil just kind of automatically went in. So I'm gonna, and then up here as well, right? This is, don't be fooled. This is not the halfway point. It's above the halfway point. So we kind of, if you can start by creating this envelope, a more simple shape like this, you know, rectangle, and then nipping in the edges, it really helps to get things in the right place. Um, that's why I'm showing you this in this way. I wouldn't necessarily start this way. Well, I probably would actually. Pretty simpler, similar. Um, but I like the, it's more the concept I'm trying to show you. This one I'm still not getting right. So see, I've corrected this one twice already. I, I was talking to another teacher friend last night and this woman, and I said, have you noticed in demos like that you'll, you, I said, I've had to slow myself down in my demos because um, I make so many mistakes in the demos and correct them so quickly that I realized my students weren't even seeing <laughs> I was making them. <laughs> and I want that to be part of the process. So I'm trying to slow down get you to see yeah is that right one two one I'm changing water it needs to come down i was right the first time and even though this feels kind of silly it's helpful one two yeah there we go i do a lot of comparative like how far along the halfway point is it right i do a lot of that stuff Later, you'll be even better at seeing things like where does this ear, ear kind of intersect with this head. That's why these spaces are so important. If we can get this shape, 
which I might have us do next. Uh, I'm going to have us do two other shakes before we do that. We'll do this one. No, you can't really see that. It's very yellow. There. There. This inner shape is kind of part of the shape between. It's outer shape of where one animal starts and another one stop, stops. And then maybe this one. So it's almost like we're carving out of marble the shapes. I'll send this across to you because I think you're probably both going to be jumping into this in a second. And I also think at this point, even if you get these shapes a little bit off, you'll be able to correct by moving forward. So give me just a second. Oh, here, I'll send this across. Eventually, I'm going to get a better phone, probably an iPhone. Diana's talked me into it. You're really convincing, Diana. Not many people can talk me into things, but you do it all the time. <laughs> oh, she's not here. I'll have to tell you that when she gets back. What were you saying, Leo? I said, um, you're very convinced, you're a very persuasive woman. And not very many people can convince me to change my mind on something, but Diana is definitely one of them. What did you change your mind about? Uh, iPhone. An iPhone. Like I've mm. been using Android for so long, I just felt like it was too hard. And Diana basically talked me into it. Were your ears burning, Diana? You, have you got what? Were your ears burning? Did you hear me? Yeah. No, I just came in and I heard you now. So you bought I an you, iPhone. I said you're a very persuasive woman. There are not many people who can change my mind on certain things. You have done it several times. And eventually I said, I'm going to buy an iPhone, which I decided to do because it's so much better. And you told me it was easier to use than the Android. It's instinctive almost, yeah. yeah. I mean, if you haven't ever used it and you've used a different de device your whole life, it probably isn't totally instinctive. Like it's like Procreate, right? You still need to learn how to use it. But the camera yeah. is so much better. And then when I put my phone up here, it'll be a much better image for you guys. We shall get there. Um, Anik, let me know if I can ever like make special, like a little special newsletter that you could send out to your peeps. I'm totally happy to try that. Um, Anna, you don't know this because you haven't done this with us long enough, but we go through the summer pretty much the same schedule, even though there's like a drop off and, you know, people are in and out as they go on vacation. Um, so, yep. That's great. Yes, we like that. And so you can see here. Um, I'm wondering if this is too far. Wait, it really is. Um, oh. 
Oh, here's where it is. So this is a really classic mistake. This year is really much longer than this one. And it looked shorter because I made this air kind of stick out too far in the right. All right. So that looks a little bit better. Notice how little changes like that can make a difference. I also like to find kind of where the points on my on my my guidelines. I can see that the ear here, if I go straight down, this is basically where this comes in. So I'm going to bring the ear in like this, and then the face in like this, so that it, they're lined up. I might change that a bit. So I'm kind of constantly thinking about how one thing relates to another. And this is a really magical analytical way of thinking. It is, it is a brilliant analytical tool. Once you start to really assess it and work it out and use it, it's, um, it's fantastic. So I'm not really ever, uh, let's see, I'm gonna put this here. I'm kind of working on this negative space, this weird negative space. Maybe down here a little bit. Okay. There's the ear, there's the forehead. And there's that. So I'm kind of dealing with this in pieces too. This kind of comes more or less straight down to about here. And this lines up more with here. So you see how I'm kind of constantly, yeah, that's interesting. I think that's right. I won't necessarily get all these shapes right, but I'll be able to correct better. Would anybody feel this would be helpful if I turned it upside down or are you good looking at it right side up? That's okay for me at this point. Okay. Yeah, for now, for now it's fine. All right. Maybe we'll look at it upside down after we're done with the outer shape. Mm-hmm. Is that so that you just look at it as shapes rather than try to draw the animals? Or why would you look at it upside down? Uh, yes, it helps you kind of, um, it disrupts what we call the light, the right brain. Um, have you never done the drawing upside down, the mat, drawing the man upside down exercise, Anna? No. Okay, I'm gonna send it across the thread and give it to you as a homework assignment. Okay, thank you. Yeah. For those of you who haven't done it in a while, it's a great exercise. I mean, technically, you should be doing that, Anna, now anyway, but we can't help it, right? Our brain decides what something is, and then it tries to tell us what's going on. 
that could be interesting for me, right? And it gets in the way of what's actually going on, right? How far are their legs apart from each other? Is he standing straight at down, right at an angle? Is it the way he it's not? All of these things. And also, now, uh, I'm doing a kind of piece by piece. It's really easy for me. Something is very noisy. That would be. Huh. Chronic lives with two boys. What can you? Um, the dragons. The dragons. Uh. <laughs> the dragon. Exactly. What's oh, sorry. Did you mean two boys, or you count her husband? I count the husband. Okay, I, I thought so. <laughs> He's also Italian. <laughs> She's like, yep. Yeah, my hobby is. American Italian. Brooklyn Italian. Yeah, oh. Brooklyn Italian. Brooklyn Italian. Oh. That's a whole other thing in itself. Yes, I think it's very different. When I look at things like where do I place this, I can see it lines up with here this back leg, so I can kind of come over here. The legs in front are going to be bigger. Then you think, oh, that's interesting. Even bigger. That shape should be much skinnier. Hmm. Diana? Yeah? I'm going kayaking tomorrow. But I figured you'd be busy with work anyway. Uh, oh, yeah, I am busy. I have a friend who's taking the day off. Unfortunately, it's going to be like 32 degrees Celsius, like really hot. We're going to have 86 tomorrow. Are we going to have 90 something? Don't brag. Don't brag. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice now, but then it's when it gets really, really, really hot, then when it gets really, really hot, we, we don't brag so much. We've been having such a hard, oh my God, it's been so hard. It's been the worst, really cold and rainy. And I mean, I know we're known for this, but it's not fun. Yeah, we're going to have 90 degrees tomorrow. That's not nice. To me, it's not yeah, nice. Exactly. What is it now? What is it like now, Leah? It's freezing. Uh, it's too. The actual temperature is, but I woke up, it was cold this morning. I keep having to switch from heating to air conditioning and vice versa. Oh, no, we're not there yet. It's all heat. <laughs> it's like still all heat all the time. Um, like today, I'm having, I'm going to have to switch to air conditioning. It's, well, I've already told the machine because of, of 90 degrees. And then it's just going to be too hot. I did not place this far enough. And I can see that. So my big error was that my outside, and I could tell when I was trying to place the legs. Yeah. Uh -huh, there we go, that's better.
If you're having a little trouble with the legs here, I'm totally having trouble with the legs here. That's a legit thing that's happening. Okay. I may need the upside down world. To help me with this one. So this will be a good because it feels. I guess it's more, yeah, I guess it's in more than I thought it was. I'm probably still going to use the upside down wall. So we'll get a chance because I have a feeling if I'm struggling with this, you guys are too. Better, not too bad. It's really tricky to get the legs. This isn't right, I know. So I'm going to. What I'm struggling with is I can see that the space between the legs. is very thin and when i put the legs together i keep making them a little bit wider which makes me think uh, maybe something is off about these proportions so i've got it the kind of best i can i want you guys to do what you can do and then we're going to do an upside down check leah well, yeah, i've sent my i'm looking best thing. I'm looking. <laughs> looks pretty good to me honestly i think it looks pretty good honey thank you going so your inside lines more of the inside lines that are important to pay attention to are here i'll do these in red right you've got that what am I doing here? Anybody know? Lights and darks. Anna, what am I doing here? What am what I doing? Out? Yeah, let's see. What am I doing? Uh, you're putting the you're outlining the dark parts, so you yes. know for you. Bingo, exactly. So I am outlining the dark areas, which you're definitely going to want. And I'm outlining them kind of as a group, not as every little teeny tiny shift. I'm mostly starting with the bigger dark parts. So that's the red. Here, I'm gonna take a picture of this so you all can see it up close. Oops, sorry. Nope, here, wrong picture, here we are.
And I think I'll take a look at yours in a second, Anna. Oops. I'm thinking it looks good. All right, here we go. Okay. By the way. You guys will think this is funny. I have officially made my entry back into journalism. In what way? The local newspaper, I mean, the really local newspaper, the terrible one <laughs> in my neighborhood. I decided to like offer to write them a, 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 they come out every two weeks. I decided to offer to write them an arts column every two weeks when they come oh, out. Oh, wow. And they just, get to just sent me an email this morning. Yeah, actually, it's paid. It's actually paid. Oh, good. Not well. She just sent me an email this morning saying, I'm about to announce you as arts editor on the same time I wrote out the newspaper. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, that's I've, pretty yeah. cool. It's, it's cute, actually. It's really cute. Um, you know, it's a very teeny tiny thing. She's like, I don't, I don't hope you don't mind. I'm about to announce you as the arts editor. So long as it involve, doesn't involve many more duties. Oh, no. You know, it's just writing. Uh, for me, it's like helpful. That doesn't look right. All right. I know. There we go. That's where things kind of went off the rails for me. Um, for me, it's kind of, I have a, you know, I now have a gallery down in this neighborhood. And I realized if I, I didn't like, you know, I could do a lot with publicity if I, and I could help other artists too, you know, if I, uh, uh, if I just like, you know, wrote, you know, contributed an article, I thought I would be volunteer because it's just a tiny little thing. And she was like, oh no, we'll pay you. And now I'm the arts editor. Cool. <laughs> Congratulations. I think it's hilarious. <laughs> You put it in your CV. Right. Oh, hell no. <laughs> People would wonder what happened. <laughs> but it is definitely a way to use those skills. <laughs> it's very funny. It's cute, actually. 
you know, they nobody people don't know how to do this stuff. The people who have taken it over are really nice, but they don't have none of them have any journalism experience at all. The managing editor never. She's an activist, she, and she wants to support the neighborhood. What you should be finding through this process is that thinking of the things as the bigger shapes, like the tilt, the, the shape of this little cat, this little cow, this little um, goat's head, uh, you can kind of get it, it's kind of weird looking on the outside. But once you get it, you realize, oh, yeah, because I'm, because then this shape has to fit in here like this. Oh. It's really a collection of shapey shapes, right? Like dark and light shapes, rather than the leg, the head, the the this, the that. This line, for example, super important. It sort of shows the neck, the defining line of the neck, but also the front of the body versus the side, which is lighter. It's interesting how much you one sees of that. And then actually, yes, here is, which I covered up in the printed version. Here is the black and white. Here is the actual outer shape of the face on this one. I think it's a little, really? down here. I think I kind of covered it up with my marks on the on this one. This sort of mouth area is just this hilarious set of shapes. Probably a good idea, right, to keep measuring. Where is this start in relation to this? I'm not drawing the eye exactly. I'm drawing this sort of dark fur shape around the eye. I'm doing a little reshaping of this ear. Oh yeah, I think this is going to work out pretty well as a subject. So notice I'm not trying to draw the nose right away. I'm trying to draw, you know, I'm focusing on this shape. I'm just going to keep emphasizing that today because this is the big lesson and getting things in the right places.
I decided to continue with garden, garden motifs. Are you going to do the oranges without the? Yeah, I think I will, but I'm not doing that right now. I, I'll show you my uh, start of painting and you'll get to guess what it is. Okay. <laughs> now I think you can see what it is, but it's super uh, sketchy. But we who paint with acrylic paint, we can do it super sketchy. Correct. We can correct. Okay, let's see, where are we? Let's see. That's where I'm at. Uh, nice, Ani. That's looking good. Oh, they are cute. Oh, Thank that's you. lovely, Diana. Yeah, we we'll see. But it, that's the start anyway. It's just it's so pretty. Two tips from my border. Seems to be coming along. I've been painting plants for a long time now. You have indeed. But it's good training to work with all the different greens and reds and yeah to see how like they're the same to see how they are are yeah. different yeah uh we i think we did a really good watercolor in this in tuesday's class we spent a lot of time looking at the different blues yeah I should probably bring in a little bit more of this. That was nice. Yeah, I wasn't, um, by the way, guys, I wasn't really able to fully shape this, these front legs until I added in the inner, the inside shapes here. So at the end, and I mean these darks and lights that we're sketching in now. Sandra, how's the elephant going? I just um, finished, uh, I had already done drawing, so I just transferred it. And I sent you a picture of these different charcoals. I mean, yeah. that's with a that's lot right. of water. I didn't do it properly, you know, like, what is it that you're supposed to show the masthead, is it? Right. I didn't do that, you know, like the darkest. Let's see. Did you send the me? elephant? No. Not the elephant, the liquid charcoal. I think the middle one is perfect for the elephant. This is a cool thing to know. Ooh, look at that. Is that the cherry? Oh, yes, I agree. So that's so the grape seed, adding, the middle one. Are you just adding water, Sandra? Yeah, like that's water? right. Okay. How, and um, does it have a different texture? Does it feel different? So one of them felt a bit gritty, but on paper it didn't show. Interesting. Uh, and there's, I think this is one box, right? I think they have like three other different tints. I think I got a warm one, maybe. Yes. How interesting. I'm intrigued. Totally intrigued. Yeah, I mean, I bought it ages ago. I don't know why it's taken me so long to. Oh, you've been busy. Something with it. 
Well, I've been busy with other things, I guess. You've been busy with ink and you've been busy. You've been doing a lot of stuff. So when is it you're going to Korea again? Uh, yes, May 15, yes. like less than a month away. Mm. And that's a big one, isn't it? Oh, and there's so many complicated things. I'm, I haven't, I bought guidebooks, but I haven't, I haven't really done much with them. Um, and now I really need to get down to it. And I should be so excited and looking forward to it. And I don't know why, but I'm not. You know, Sandra, I have a, I always have this kind of um, uh, sort of dread of travel. I do too, in fact, because of I cuts. didn't used to, but uh, I think it's age. I think we get tired. I think when you've traveled as much as like, you know, we have, you get a little exhausted by it. I think for me, the pleasure went away when I started having cats and but yeah, actually, strangely it. enough, and normally, as soon as I booked my ticket or when I have even a trip to France, I start getting anxious about the cats. But I haven't been anxious about the cats. I'm just not. Well, you had a good experience when you went to see your brothers. So I, I think... had a fantastic experience. And having actually this young man staying here, um, it's made my life. It's ma I'm much less anxious than with a cat sitter. Wait, yes, because you know he lives here, and so I know that they're not even if he's not their best best friend, they're not lonely. Uh, who is the guy, by the way? He's a guy who used to work where you're taping, and he's just going to come and house sit for you while you're gone. Yeah, more cat sit, I guess, more than house cat sit. Cat. He's a young young journalist. Who used to Perfect. work for Reuters now works for the. He'll probably I can just imagine all of the. Um, I can just imagine all of the uh, the boys in the house running around. Well, the cleaning lady who adores the cats told me that she was really disappointed when she came because they followed him around instead of her. Yeah, they'll want. The <laughs> <laughs> I can only imagine. But uh, but he doesn't pet them or anything, or he doesn't even play with them. Whereas she plays with them. And I think it's because he's got a very calm presence. And I think they like them. Also, I guess he was the one feeding them, but still. Yes. Oh, and let me, I'm going to send this across one more time with the stopping the video. All right, I'm going to send this over. I'll send over the black and white right now. So that you guys have that too. Gesundheit. I'm not really. I wasn't sneezing. I had something in my throat. Ah. So my dragon is looking at my painting and he's much more interested in that than the birds outside. Ah. Do you think he's starting to get an inkling of what it is you do? Uh, sometimes he knows I paint him. He knows he's a model. But 
difficult to explain the purpose of art. To a cat. To yeah. a cat. <laughs> The nice thing is that they're not like humans to try to find what is the purpose. I right. don't think they look for purpose of things. Everything is just fascinating. I feel okay. like Hermes as a personality is like that. Everything is totally fascinating to him. He's just fascinated. He's like, like endlessly interested in everything that's going on. Yeah, they like just anything you do. They want to take yeah, part. Like, like, what is this? Like, even like if you're cleaning the house, they love that. They understand cleaning and they love cleaning because they're very clean animals. They don't like the vacuum cleaner, though. No, they don't. Well, I bought, I keep buying especially uh, silent ones. Right. But they're never silent enough. And uh, Anna and Ani, don't worry about um, uh, getting this, you know, finished quickly. Uh, focusing on the drawing and notice what one of the things I want you guys to notice is that I think our instinct when we do paintings like this is to want to focus on the face and the eyes first. And notice this is almost the last things we put in the painting, in the drawing. We start with the bigger shapes. This is the instinct I'm trying to train out of you because it's it's not um, the instinct isn't correct for drawing correctly, and it's that instinct to want to draw this 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 first. This is everything will be too big and in the wrong places. Right? If you can get out, of it's hard to yourself, move. Yes, if you can give yourself the time to like set up and block in where all the major shapes are, it's just a hundred times easier. I mean, it's not exactly easy. I've been struggling a little bit with this leg, but I, I'm getting, you know, you struggle a little bit with the pieces, but they are much easier to manage when you've got proportions right. I'm coming here and just checking a couple things. Yep. Just love the look on his little face here. I love the way his head is tilted. I think you'd never get the tilt of this head right if you tried to sketch the eyes and the nose and then the ears. You'd never get it right. It's too angled. It's too much at a weird angle. Uh, and the angle's weird because foreshortening is involved, right? And we need to translate how shapes look in three dimensions when we put them down on a flat surface. I'm gonna make just a little bit of tea, you guys. I'll turn on my mute so you don't have to be bothered by the noise.
I'll show you something cute here. Here you go. Oh, who's that? Oh, I didn't know. Who's that, Leo? That's a uh, that's um bazoo, the stray. Well, he woke up and now he's like he was like mm. nice what? enjoying his comfortable life of a human. He is enjoying his comfortable life of a human. He stays in the studio most nights when I can catch him. Okay, Anna, let me take a look at that. But whoever watches these videos must be like, she talks about her cats all the time. Well, hopefully they're cat lovers too. Okay. Okay. So, Anna, notice that you've got the, okay, I'm just double checking here. Where's your halfway, oh, okay, I see, there's your halfway point. Never mind, you're good. You're in good shape. Um, Notice his leg doesn't really bend like this. It doesn't, this front leg doesn't bend like this. It goes out and then up like that. And then kind of in and then skinny here and then out wide. Right, so there's this shape, there's the shape of the knee. Uh, I struggle with that a lot. I think I got it now, finally. See, I'm even fixing mine as I'm talking to you about it. All right, and Anik. Yeah, Anik, that looks good. Looks good to me. All right, you guys. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I also look at the shape of this. It's too thin. Um, there you go. And also, actually, look at this shape in relation to where you have the eyes. I don't think they're quite in the right place. So the eye needs to come down, Anna, because this ear is much thicker and the eye, right, is below, the eye is closer to like the back. Oh, look, I have to fix that too. Here, here you go. Eye is closer. To where the back comes in. And here, yes, and this one is a little bit higher. There we go. And get that dark shape around like where the eye is. It, it's pretty big and prominent. There we go. All right. Anik, that looks good. So here's our question. How are we going to, what What do you think is the good, um, look at this guy. What's the good base painting to do? Color. What should we do? I was thinking Grisaille, but honestly saying, I, I'm not sure. I'd say no, because Grisaille, they're black and white on the top, right? True. So what do you think? I don't know, I would go violet. 
Violet. But on the other hand, the violet would be like uh, like like um, it's it's cool, yeah. And white, uh, black and white is also like kind of, kind of cool. So maybe yellow. Uh, yellow isn't a bad one. Maybe burnt sienna is always a winner. Yeah. <laughs> uh, cadmium red, mm -hmm. right? Um, orange, like so. This is what mm -hmm. I want you thinking. Something warm in your base. Something warm and something kind of orangey, reddy, yellowy. I'm going to give you, uh, uh, you can choose which one you want. Good job, Ani, by the way. Very good reasoning. I like your deductive reasoning there. Well, we could do that. Your instinct, of course, is to want to do. I mean, Grisai would be great, but I think it would look too flat. That's why I was, what I was afraid of. And then I thought of, of something like a, in the blues and violets, but then I thought it's too cold, too cold and it, anyway, it would end up flat. Yeah. I'm going to go vermilion. Here in front of me, I have burnt sienna. So I'll probably use burnt sienna for this project, but you guys don't need to use burnt sienna. You can use any. Bird Sienna used to be the only thing I did values paintings in. Um, it's nice because it's this kind of earthy color, burnt umber and burnt sienna, or, and also raw umber and raw sienna. We're going to go there. Um, our neat colors, because they're earthy and they're kind of in everything, even whatever it is, they're there. So let me, I'm going to change my water because my water is kind of gross from my Tuesday class. You left the same water. And we'll see how this works. I'm using a smaller brush as usual, starting with the darks. not really focusing on the eyes, covering them up for the moment, but focusing on getting those kind of dark, not in great detail. And notice I'm only doing one side of the goat space because only one side is dark on the top. I'm doing the darkest areas first. Mm. I'm not worrying if I cover up some light areas because I can always get those back. So down here, for example, there's a lot of black and white. Now we get to the fun part. Now that drawing isn't fun. It's a little tedious. As I get these darks in, and I'm not doing my midtones yet, and I'm not doing my lighter darks yet. I'm only doing my darkest darks. Look at how already this image is starting to pop. I'm not doing the, so there's the beginning. And then, oh yes, I could also do things like the shadows.
Although notice the shadows are not as dark as the darkest parts. You can tell because the legs show up as darker next to the shadows in the background. Maybe I also do the back wall, which is pretty dark. I'm going to switch to a bigger brush for that. I'm not necessarily trying to get in the stripes. I'm just sort of trying to block in. Notice also the wall is not as dark as the darkest parts of the goat. Okay, so there we go. Yeah, it's already looking and notice, notice how the darks and lights kind of interplay with each other. It's interesting how as soon as you lay these down, uh, the brain starts to kind of put it together. Kind of messed up my elephant here. Um, that's okay. That's it's great because it's a new medium. I'm not really yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's great. You're getting through all the issues. Don't worry. Do, can you show it's, it to us? You feel yeah. Also, the elephant is hard because it has no hairy texture. See, there's some parts that are too dark. Can I hold it? Can I, here? I'm gonna pop this up. Oh, I don't know, Sandra. It's all right. Keep Maybe going. Maybe I just need to darken all the rest. Because yeah, there's some going. parts that are really dark. Exactly. But actually, I think it looks, I don't think you've messed it up yet, but I understand the feeling and that's all good, right? <laughs> it's all good. As you know, I know you know this now. I know you've been doing this long enough to know you've got to make some mistakes. Yeah, I'm not, um, you, you know, it's a new, completely new medium and it's a difficult subject. So Exactly. So, yeah, you're not like, you. you one has to learn to be gentle on oneself. I'm working on a painting, a big city space, space uh, shapescape right now, and it's not coming together the way I'd like. And I'm annoyed by it. I won't lie. It's a commission? No, just part of my inventory. Oh, good. So at work. least there so isn't oh, but pressure to. No, there's not that. I'm, it's only me because I, I have a vision and I'm trying to get there. And I'm, I'm just struggling to make that happen. It's it's not as easy as Didn't it you say we're not supposed to have a vision? What's that? Didn't you tell no, us we're not I supposed mean, to have a vision? I mean, at the beginning, it helps to let go. Yes, I have said that, Jesus. My words might be back to haunt me. Um, this is a little different. It's not a vision, it's like- This is what you'd like to achieve. A concept. And I think we all have that. Yeah. We need it's a concept, that. right? It's a concept yeah. that I want. I'm trying to push more consistency in my work across subject matter. And so I'm trying to bring in, but I don't exactly know what that's going to look like. But when I try things, I'm like, well, I don't have it. Look how that looks, right? So it's a little bit like, but I'm getting closer. And it, I'm also working much bigger because I want- Oh, that's hard too. Yeah. Big. yeah, so all of those things, I'm just like, ah, oh, this is taking so long. Oh my God. I'll send, I'll send you guys a picture of it. Yeah. Do yeah. you find you, you wasting, I mean, not wasting, but using a lot more paint? I mean, it, it's not, believe it or not, it's not that much more paint. You'd think it would be. It totally isn't. It's- um, It's uh, it doesn't take appreciably more paint than a smaller paint. Uh, here I'll send this across so you guys can. I remember you saying that for the um, when you went to New Jersey. Yeah. But it seemed that you would have used more. Used a lot of paint, yeah. And I didn't really, yeah. Um, it's like this uh, woman who does like these huge 
murals of uh, ice, you know, Arctic ice with right. pastels. Can you imagine how much that yes. costs? I can't, but maybe it's less than we think. Well, I'm sure she's got a special deal with you. She's a Unison ambassador and she's a well-known artist. So I'm sure they do, a, I hope they do a deal soon. You know, Leah, this is beautiful as it is. You like it? I don't know. It's feeling, mm -hmm. I feel like it's still a little disjointed. Maybe I'm closer than I think. <laughs> Do you like That's it? Maybe this. I like it. Let's see. Let's see I, think I sent it across the thread. I think it's going in the right direction. I've been feeling it shift, mm -hmm. but it's um, there's just a lot of pieces. Oh, wow. Yes. And... Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? It's very ambitious. It's also, I know it's um, a tough subject. So I knew going in that this was a, that this, there's a lot going on. It's going to be challenging to get all the pieces. It's very big. Like the sky. Yeah, yeah, the sky I'm really happy with. And the building on the left with lights, that's okay. This is the car that you were working on. The car looks yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah that thing the road is this a a crossing yeah sorry i went away a little bit it looks like the lines are too thin and too close together for a crossing. Um, but i don't know it's yeah it's that that's one of the areas i'm i'm trying to lock down yep it's the car turned out great yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I think it's coming together. I'm happy. It's really coming along. I and uh, mm -hmm. more brights are coming in, and I'm going to work on the side of the buildings more. I mean, there's a lot of. It's just. Uh, I'd say yesterday, but it took a long time, and I had to really change. I don't think I had to evolve the way I do things, and that is. Um, uh, uh, I had to think That's more different. about it. It's just, it, it's just, it, I don't know. It's just an interesting, it was a, ch it's a challenge and I think it's getting there, but I'm still kind of struggling with it because it's not quite there yet. It's not quite there yet, but you, but it, you guys are liking it. It looks cool. As long yes. as you, it looks French. French. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I like, love it. I wonder what it is. What it is you think you look French? The umbrella, the, the rain? Yeah, like like the old French paintings. <laughs> the car. This one with car. This one. I'm just wondering because there's some things that if you analyze it, what is it that makes you say that? The color scheme. Mm. Atmosphere. The atmosphere. It looks like a lot of French. At, I think it's more like almost the style of it. I'm very influenced by um, a couple. Oh, you know, there's definitely a lot of Luigi Loir influence. Mm -hmm. He's a French painter, was a French painter. Um, I can feel that in how he handles his buildings. It's New York, so it could be. I mean, yeah. to me, it looks totally like New York in the rain. And, and, and yeah, for me, it looks you American. Yeah. You cover with a person with umbrella. It feels like it's a very rainy day, and all the all, all the painting is saying so. It's 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 just beautiful, but at the same time, it's spring or summer. Yeah. So it's so so you feel the the air vibrating basically with uh, with with the heat. Oh my uh, god! Uh, what do you think it's spring or summer? Because of the green. I need to hire you. <laughs> no, it, it's the it's the vibrancy, it's the it's, it's the warmth of this painting. It's basically you can cover up the part where this person's umbrella is. It's summer. It's summer rain. It is. You're absolutely right. Last year, last year's summer rain. Um, I was at my cousin's wedding, and we were in Chelsea, and we were running back, and it was raining, and I snapped this a photo. A, of this girl walking down the street with her umbrella. And uh, it was really atmospheric photo, but there's a lot going on. I can't do mm -hmm. what the photo is doing. I have to I have to leave from that and make some artistic decisions. And uh, that's been, and brighten things and dark, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, um, mm -hmm. it's just like, there's a, it, I want it all to tie together and it's not quite there yet, but it's almost there. 
does it feel like you're trying to, to, to tell the story of the photo instead of telling the story of the painting? Yeah, I need to, yes. I'm trying, no, well, I'm trying to tell the story of the painting and instead of the story mm -hmm. of the photo. But I'm, exactly. yes, the other, yes, exactly. So, but I have to leave the photo because photo mm. can't, the photo's got too much detail. It's, but the lights of the photo, the composition of mm. the photo, the kind of the street corner, how much, mm. uh, you know, like that's the sort of basic elements are there and the way the light is playing, I really mm -hmm. like it. You saw the original photo, you would see it. I, I, the, I would like to see a original photo, but I don't I don't think that I need it. <laughs> this is this is beautiful, Leah, really. And I'm and I'm not saying it just to say something nice. I'm just saying that I'm totally enchanted. Thank you. Thank well, you. That's such a nice thing to say. I appreciate that. Thank you. Well, it's work in progress and um I can feel the level of my discomfort as I push beyond what I'm looking the the the, the representative to the personal in a way, and I can feel mm -hmm. it like it's really it, at this size with this kind of a composition. I know I have the photos in there. Um, I can feel it. I might be able to show you what I'm originally. The photo is pretty great too. In some ways, one might argue, why do the photo mm -hmm. at all? Why do the painting at all? The photo kind of does it, but painting is different. It is different. Mm -hmm. Right? It's a different thing. I'm gonna get it too. Here's the original photo. Is that in there? There you go. It's big. You might have to open it. Okay. Okay. Oh okay. <laughs> oh, I, I would be obsessing o uh, over the street. <laughs> right? It's really tough. I've been yeah. really, I've really had to pull, I've really had to um, use my, <laughs> use every skill I have. I'm changing it. Cars mm -hmm. in a slightly different place. Everything's in slightly different places. The emphasis is different. But it's... Um, mm -hmm. Sky is much lighter, you know, because you just it's just too dark otherwise, it's too heavy a photo. Mm -hmm. Um, but uh it's interesting, isn't it? Like it is the basis for something interesting. And now I have to figure out how to convey that. All right, Anna, let's see. It looks like movie scene. Doesn't it? Mm -hmm. I think you should uh, show it to some Mr. Scorsese or some or someone like that. <laughs> let's see oh nice diana lovely what a pleasant um way to spend your morning before you have to jump into work <laughs> yeah good subject easy you know yeah let's see oh look at those adorable things very nice anna i see you moved into like the midtone so i'll quickly join you so I've sent I've sent mine uh, in vermilion uh, above your your painting, Julia. So they are oh, there already, see. just in case. I'm sorry. How did I miss that? Yeah, it happened. I mean, that's okay. Yeah. Let's see. Oh, they are so cute. Oh, lovely decision. Oh, these are fantastic, you guys. All right. So. Um, now let's look at the color photo again and think about glazing. How well I'll catch up here. How do you think we should glaze? 
this. What color should we glaze before we go into B? I have an idea myself. Prussian blue. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. Prussian blue would be a great one, or any blue, really. Um, Anna, you can see that I, even on your light, your lightest areas, you want to have some color. Although, you know, we can handle that with the, um, you can also handle that with the uh, uh, glaze. So actually, I think you're okay. Um, and in fact, let me, I'll wipe this off because, oops, no, it's too dry. I wiped off other things too. Um, is your guys is still wet? Anything, is your painting still wet? A tiny bit in, up in some places. All right. So do you remember? I totally mucked this up. Look at that. All right. That's okay. We can make this work. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to quickly get. Uh, so what we want to do is dry it. So if you don't, mm -hmm. I'm going to take a blow dryer tomorrow. And you can see, even though I kind of mushed this up, it's still okay. It's, it's definitely, it's, it's kind of more interesting right now. Here, I'm gonna um, mute myself and then blow. That didn't take very long. And now I'm going to get, I don't know if I have questions, but I definitely have ultramarine. So yeah, you want to take a dark blue. I'm going to use ultramarine just because that's what I have. Um, hold on. So if you remember the glazing process, which is going to give us our base that we put those nice black and whites on. Lots of water. No real globs of paint. I'm just making a mess today. No real globs of paint, just this kind of thin watery layer. I'm going to run it over everything. It's okay that it makes it heavy and dark. One of the great things about acrylic is that the lights really come out against the darks. Oh my God, this looks so cool and weird because I smeared everything. I smeared much of my sketch, um, my painting sketch. So this will be quite a fun build on the top. <laughs> So go ahead and do a glaze. And then I don't know if we have time. We might start to have time to start to add your blacks and whites. I'm gonna have to leave you guys. I really, really have to go to work. All right, Diana, Godspeed, go get it all done. Thank you. And I'll continue with this, I guess, on Saturday then, if we're not painting tomorrow. I see this. Hi. All right, my dear. We'll see you later. Great work. Bye. Good seeing you. Move the spotlight, just because I think this is a good kind of breaking point. Um, if you want to keep going, of course you can. We've got about like 10 minutes left, but I also think there are times when we let the painting rest, right? And this heavy mm -hmm. 
crazy day. Go ahead and hold them up. I'm curious. I hope you didn't, you know, like, here's what I did. Yeah. Very nice. Very, very nice. <laughs> I just realized that I'm matching my underpainting with my nails today. Very nice. <laughs> so are we in agreement, ladies? Do you want to end just a little bit early? Or if you want we, to... I mean, I, I, I'm fine with that because tomorrow it's it's, it's a crazy, crazy day, day. So, <laughs> so I don't mind. And Anna, I wanted to say, I know you're kind of off and on and being able to come to class. Just you work very fast. So even if we're on the second stage of a painting, come into class anyway. I'm going to have you just start at the beginning and I think you'll be fine. So don't feel like you have to wait until the next project is over. Uh, we'll have you start it. And then there are certain sessions where we all just work on whatever we haven't finished mm -hmm. that you can kind of save and work on them. You know what I mean? In like some yeah. of those sessions. So don't like ever let oh no, I'm coming in at the end of a project, worry you. And if you have time, we have a video, but I wouldn't even worry, you're quick. Okay, sure. All I right. just didn't, wasn't able to do it the past few weeks because I don't have painting materials at home. Right, right, right. But right, you know, in general, I just wanted to say, I wanted to really encourage you. Don't worry if you're in pace with the class or not, I will help you. You'll be, okay. you seem to do quite fine just being given an assignment. And so I can give you the first half of the assignment while everybody's working on the second half. It's not difficult. Okay, sure. All Thank right, you. all right, ladies. And uh, Sandra, we will see, oh, oh, before we go, how are you feeling now? Check in. How do better. You feel? you feel better? Yeah. A little bit less anxious? Yeah, a bit more excited. Good. I mean, like, positive thing. It's amazing that like this kind of work can bring that to you, isn't it? I think it's because it gets you away from the part of you that's anxious. It's the other side of the brain. It's the other brain, the brain. Just it's a don't... different brain activity where you're actually working towards achieving something and that feels good. I think it stops like, uh, you know, when you get into that state where your brain is spinning or you kind of... Mm -hmm. You know, like in Buddhism, they say when, when you're glass, like if it's your mind, when it's all kind of uh, opaque. And then if you let it settle, it just settles to the bottom uh, and becomes clear. It has that kind of effect. Yeah. Did anybody else notice a shift? How do you, uh, Anna, Anik, what about you two? But ha Sandra, that makes me happy that happened for you. It's good. It's, it happened you. for you. I like the fact that... Um, when we uh, have the class in the in the spring and summer, here it's like evening, yeah, and I still see hear morning birds uh, that I miss uh, because I have a garden uh, just on the other side of the building. But when I'm in the office, I cannot listen to them, so it's really nice to hear Sandra's. Sandra's uh, yeah, mine are these days. One of my favorite moments. <laughs> right now it's 25 degrees outside. It's absolute perfection. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Anna, what it's going to get much hotter but... yeah that's that's the thing <laughs> and Sandra I hope you will have fun kayaking yeah oh thank you uh, I'm going kayaking tomorrow yes that's okay I was just telling Diana I can't. and Anna what about you how do you feel I, I feel I feel okay uh, I feel a bit nervous about how the painting is going to go okay. I don't know I you know, when you're halfway through, it's like, am yes. I going to ruin the past two hours of work that I just did? Yes. Any yes. false move and it's over, <laughs> but we'll see you next time. <laughs> Good. I like that. So what I want you to notice about that anxiety, it's, it's beginner's mind, right? So you're back at the beginning of learning a new process for how to do something. You can't exactly visualize how it's going to work out. Right? That's fabulous. So, um, it's good to notice it, and you're right. You should be feeling that way. You could very well be feeling that way. That's a very valid way to feel at the end of a lesson where we haven't finished the painting. Um, that's really great. So thank you for talking about that because it just reminds me to say, when like smart people like you guys, when you know who have achieved enough to like do that, have this success and career in this one field, 
when you can't anticipate what the answer is, it's hard, it, it's anxiety producing. So you probably felt better at the beginning of the lesson and maybe a little bit more anxious at the end. <laughs> yeah. And like, like that's totally valid, but hold on to that feeling because that's the moment. And I can tell you this because it's happening for me in my work right now. That anxious feeling is where all the good things happen. All the exciting things happen. Um, it's really amazing that we get to experience it. It's where your brain begins to blossom. All kinds of things are like happening in that uncertainty feeling. So keep that in the back of your head that yes, you're going to feel it. And it's actually prompting something kind of magical. And we All right, and I think that's a great way to end. Ladies, have a great night. We'll see you. You too. Have a good weekend, Leah. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thanks, Leah. Bye, Bye Sandra. Bye. Bye, guys.